This is improvements in the artistic graph visualization feature. Uh, we have made uh, lots of changes and lots of improvements in this feature. And um, uh, so this is a sample model uh, showing how this uh, visual, graph visualization feature looks like now. Uh, so the first uh, improvement is that uh, we have introduced uh, a toolbar here on the top with the two options uh, and we have introduced support to visualize also inheritance uh, by default you will see only prerequisites uh, this is uh, like, like you see now so this is top application but prerequisites uh, you also can select inheritance and press refresh and then uh, you will also see uh, inheritance uh, on the same diagram uh, we also changed um, uh, the, the way how these lines look like. So now these are ortho lines, and uh, they are very um, uh, similar to what we had before uh, in previous versions of the tool with the other version of the visualize um, support. Uh, also, um, uh, some of the nodes are gray. And uh, these gray notes actually they correspond to external library thesis, uh, so they are marked with a gray color. Uh, if you uh, will now only select inheritance, uh, you will see uh, only inheritance, and uh, this is on purpose a complex inheritance structure. Uh, so it depends on your models uh, if, if uh, using only, only showing inheritance uh, will be useful, but in some cases it is. Um, also uh, about this inheritance um, feature. So you, uh, if you uh, select prerequisites and you deselect inheritance, then if you have some prerequisites which are actually inherited, so they are not direct prerequisites, for prerequisites for this node, uh, but they are inherited, then you will see gray lines here. And gray lines means that uh, these in prerequisites, they were inherited. Uh, if you want to see uh, uh, now the inheritance as well on the same, uh, for, for the same node, you press refresh. Uh, now you can see for the up to that actually you have um, inherited uh, you are inheriting from nodes and uh, um, the prerequisites now will be shown directly uh, from the nodes from which you inherit so in this case um, uh, I think we're inheriting from parent one mm -hmm. uh, then parent one inherits from parent one one and then uh, we result in prerequisite three and leave one one I think that was it. Uh, you can actually if you have complex inheritance uh, you can analyze and uh, when it is deselected uh, you will get gray lines when you select both prerequisite and inheritance uh, then um, the nodes uh, prerequisites will be shown directly with black lines uh, directly from the nodes from which you inherit. So then you need to, to check application, parent one, parent one one, uh, and then you will see that uh, here actually these two, they come from parent one one. They are inherited from parent one one. Um, also we have introduced, so this is uh, still an experimental feature. And um, sometimes you need to debug and check what you get. So we have also introduced a console. Uh, it is also marked as experimental. Uh, and uh, here in the console, uh, as soon as you are uh, generating any graphs, uh, you get information which you can actually check. Uh, it um, uh, gives you the size of the graph, the number of nodes, number of pages, and uh, um, uh, also how what is the maximum of outcoming nodes from the uh, from node from a node. But, but I would I would actually think that this is outcoming ages should be, uh, but um, 
uh, this is the number of errors that's the maximum number of errors that that you that you get uh, uh, on the diagram uh, also there is some information about which utility was um, used for visualization and uh, also paths uh, to the dot file and SVG file uh, that were generated for this purpose so if uh, you need to, to check and troubleshoot, then you can look at these files directly. Uh, one more useful feature uh, that we have introduced uh, is the possibility, uh, oh, it is here, I think, uh, the possibility to show graphs even if you have uh, some nodes missing. So this is a, a big sample model, and uh, you see that uh, some nodes are red. Actually, these nodes, uh, they are missing, but we are still able to visualize. And uh, in some cases, when you're troubleshooting uh, these kind of problems, it's very useful to check uh, where do you have missing nodes, um, and how many of them, and how complex uh, they are used uh, in this structure. So if you hover over the missing node, uh, you will see um, Actually, the reference uh, platform resource reference that you used that were, that we were not uh, able to resolve. Uh, so now, for this model, you see that we have uh, three nodes. Uh, here also, we have two missing nodes. So we hover over. We see that it's uh, the, the path uh, to this missing node. Uh, so you can um, uh, on this diagram, you can double click. Double click will open uh, CGS editor. You can go on the references tab, and uh, here is information about your prerequisites so you can fix it uh, or update. Uh, you can also check this on the code tab as well. Uh, and um, uh, one more improvement, uh, and this is uh, more related to the huge. Um, uh, huge uh, TCGS uh, graphs uh, that that a customer, uh, real customer, uh, from real customer models. Uh, we are not loading uh, EMX and DFX uh, files, so this is model files. So we are not when you do this visual visualize visualize, we are not loading model files, uh, and uh, it is an improvement in performance. And you even can it is not required that that you have these model files. Uh, so uh, for visualization, we need only TCGS files. And you, so you can visualize uh, quickly, uh, even you have you do not have your model files. Um, so one of the improvements that uh, we are thinking uh, for the next release uh, related to this uh, visualization is uh, adding an option uh, or possibility to visualize uh, cycles. Uh, between nodes. So sometimes when you have a complex structure, you can introduce cycles by mistake. And uh, one of the ideas is to highlight them also on the diagram uh, with some different color that will uh, visually allow you to, to see uh, the cycles in, in the structure. Um, so uh, during these um, uh, improvements, uh, we were working on the layout improvements, and uh, now you see that. Uh, we have picked this uh, layout, so this is uh, a dot uh, layout uh, with ortho splines. Uh, so it is um, all the nodes um, represented uh, in ranks, uh, and it's actually an automatic layout. But uh, from my point of view, when I was uh, checking how readable it is, it's uh, quite readable even for the complex uh, customer models. So now I will show you a couple of examples uh, of uh, uh, real uh, customer uh, graphs. Uh, so this is an example of um, uh, one um, model. Uh, and uh, uh, here uh, the size is uh, 51 nodes, 65 edges. Uh, so and we're also we are using this dot layout uh, to visualize it. Uh, so if you um, uh, zoom in, then uh, you can see uh, the structure, you can easily analyze it. Uh, also, you see that here we are having uh, quite many gray nodes. 
Uh, and uh, sometimes it's also useful to estimate uh, how many external nodes are you using, how many um, other nodes, like executable or library you have in your model. Uh, we also experimented with some other lay layouts uh, for the same um, uh, structure. And uh, for example, uh, if we are using uh, the same structure if we are using SFDP layout it can look like this but um, uh, to my mind uh, this is maybe looks um, interesting but uh, it's um, it's less readable than um, the layout that we are uh, selecting now uh, so here if we uh, try to see and understand it's actually MS if, if you're using this this layout uh, also uh, for the same model um, uh, if we all include inheritance sometimes it complicates a lot uh, and it depends on, on how many inheritance you're using and uh, so here uh, uh, I have uh, added inheritance and now it's uh, 90 nodes, 138 edges, and uh, this is the, the layout that is um, currently used to visualize it. So uh, it is possible to zoom in, uh, zoom out, and check. So for a node, for example, you see uh, if it is used uh, as a parent node, if it is used as a prerequisite node. Uh, so this um, dot layout with the orifice lines uh, actually uh, looks quite uh, quite readable. Uh, also, one of the ideas uh, can be to highlight to select a node to highlight uh, what is outcoming. So this is uh, for the future improvements. One of the ideas. Um, so um, I also have uh, an example of the same graph uh, but uh, with a different layout with this SFDP layout so here you see there are much more nodes and uh, uh, it is actually um, um, less readable to my mind uh, also so we have um, uh, more examples of uh, uh, customer how customer models can look like so this is another uh, example uh, of, uh, of the TCGS structure and the visualization, how it will look like now. So this is a different, uh, a little bit different approach. So it doesn't contain lots of external nodes uh, and there are many connections between them. And uh, this is how it will look like now if you will use the visualization feature. Um, so, um, I think uh, this is, it. Uh, do you have any questions? Could we get some legend maybe to this graph? Uh, like explaining what, what it means. What means yes, gray, what means red, colors. Lines, yes. So, so one idea we have is that we should have a help button here also at least so you can get um, the help view pop up and show information about the graph. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there we can tell about what the colors mean and so on. Yes, and tooltips could be um, maybe not explained, but uh, showing some other um, data, not only the name of the DCGS. Yes, that's also what I thought. Because now, if everything is okay, if it is not a missing node, then you get absolutely the same. What what you see in the box, you say you get the same in the tooltip. But maybe what we can, can provide. Yeah. What kind of information would would you be interested in to have in the tooltip? I will discuss it with uh, designers, of course, for now. Yeah, yeah. What I was thinking is maybe uh, just uh, giving information uh, about uh, how many incoming, how many outcoming nodes are there. Uh, what else? We can uh, show if it is... Uh, a library or an ex oh no no but that we, we are using colors for that actually and executable is only the top one so maybe it's not so uh, big information by the way if you uh, like here if you make it big and you are analyzing this node if you hover over 
here, then you see actually uh, you see the uh, relations. The relationships, yes. Uh, so, by the way, th this is a real customer model, so that's why all the names they are uh, encrypted. <laughs> So this is not a mistake in the tool. This is done on purpose, just to make it anonymous. So here you see we have a hint, and the, um, for this one as well, yes. Maybe we could add some build variant stuff or threads. I don't know for for now. Yeah, I think uh, so, there are many possibilities to include information in these graphs. Uh, w one more idea that I was thinking about is that the possibility to visualize two uh, top nodes. So now we all, we only we always have one, and uh, it is blue. Uh, and if you have a very complex uh, TCGS, uh, like uh, uh, for example a TCGS with more than a uh, uh, hundred. Uh, uh, prerequisites uh, and each prerequisite is a complex tree then it will be very hard so the diagram will be very very huge uh, with very very relationships and maybe in some cases it, it would be useful just to take a couple of prerequisites for this main big node and uh, visualize them on the same diagram so you will see what is the common part between the two top nodes uh, that you have selected for visualization uh, and uh, which nodes are not common. So that was um, also one of the ideas after I uh, was, was analyzing customer models. So like this, for example, you select one and um, or in, in here in the, uh, so you select one, you select another at the same time or like this here uh, and uh, here and you right click and you visualize and uh, you will get so right now it will not be um, right now you, you will get only one of, of the two but if it will be possible to show two at the same time two blue boxes and then also mark the common parts with, with some new color so that was one of the ideas mm -hmm.